Since the early 1990s, numerous prospective cohort studies have shown that individuals with higher habitual intake of flavonoids, that's a broad class of polyphenolic compounds abundant in plant-based foods, exhibit lower rates of every major disease and all-cause mortality. More recent analyses have refined this picture, suggesting that flavonoid diversity, that's the range of distinct subclasses consumed, is an even stronger predictor of longevity and reduced disease risk than total intake alone. For decades, these protective associations were attributed to antioxidant effects, a broad category encompassing multiple biochemical pathways that neutralize oxidative stress and inflammation, yet new exploratory data now hints that there may be additional mechanisms at work, processes that extend beyond classical antioxidant activity and may reveal new dimensions of how flavonoids interact with cellular systems in ways that we haven't seen before. This is Daily Value, and I am your host, William Wallace. Polyphenolic compounds, often called polyphenols, are one of the most abundant and varied families of natural molecules produced by plants. More than 8,000 unique types have been identified across fruits, vegetables, teas, and herbs. In plants, they serve essential roles, providing color, to attract pollinators, helping the plant grow and reproduce, and acting as natural defenses against ultraviolet light, pests, and disease. Their structural variability also contributes to the sensory characteristics of food, the color of berries, the bitterness of cocoa, and the astringency of tea. Among these, flavonoids form one of the most widely studied groups of polyphenols and account for around 60% of all known polyphenols. Chemically, their phenolic structures, ring-shaped carbon molecules, that can attach to sugars or other small groups, and this flexibility allows them to take on many forms as well as functions. Put simply, small changes in their chemical scaffolding can dramatically change how they behave in our body. Many large studies have consistently shown that people who consume more flavonoid-rich foods tend to live longer and experience lower rates of disease and death. A 2025 study published in Nature Food strengthened this connection by analyzing polyphenol intake in over 120,000 people. It found that flavonoid diversity, not just total intake, was a stronger predictor of lower all-cause mortality and chronic disease. Participants who consumed the widest range of flavonoid types had between a 6 and 20% lower risk of death and major diseases. This discovery points to an important concept. In nutrition, Diversity may drive resilience. Each flavonoid subclass, like anthocyanins and berries or flavin-3-alls in tea, differs slightly in structure, metabolism, and how it interacts with enzymes or receptors in the body. The greater the variety, the wider the coverage across biological systems. In other words, different flavonoids seem to specialize in protecting different parts of human physiology. For decades, most of these benefits were attributed to antioxidant effects. That's a broad set of mechanisms through which flavonoids neutralize free radicals, reduce oxidative stress, and dampen inflammation, but antioxidants alone cannot explain everything. Recent findings now hint that flavonoids may also act through structural effects at the cellular level, changing the behavior of proteins and enzymes in ways we hadn't recognized before now. In short, the traditional antioxidant model, it may only describe part of the story. The diversity of flavonoid structures themselves might be what gives them their unique power to stabilize cells and promote resilience under stress. Researchers at the Wyss Institute began exploring how different flavonoids interact with cellular proteins, and the results were a little bit unexpected. They used computer modeling that predicted how molecules move and interact. They observed that flavonoids didn't just float freely in solution. Instead, they actually self-assembled into ordered fiber-like structures called supramolecular assemblies. These fibers behaved a lot like those formed by intrinsically disordered proteins. These are a class of flexible proteins that help cells survive dehydration, heat, or radiation stress by forming temporary protective gels. In the same way, the flavonoid assemblies appear to physically connect to enzyme surfaces, subtly changing their shape and movement, almost as if they were reinforcing the cell's molecular architecture from the inside. The formation of these assemblies depended on the flavonoid's chemical structure. Compounds like isocorsetrin or corsetrin, which are essentially the polyphenol corsetin, 
with sugar attachments called glycosidic groups, they built more complex multidimensional networks than the simpler molecule quercetin. In these models, the sugar groups extended outward to form a sugar backbone of sorts, giving the fibers a twist in a shape reminiscent of DNA structure. This flexibility in shape and bonding meant that different flavonoids could create slightly different architectures. The researchers interpreted this variation not as noise, but as a potential advantage. It might be the molecular basis for why dietary diversity improves resilience. Different flavonoids build different networks, giving cells multiple ways to stabilize themselves under stress to test whether the structural behavior mattered in living cells. The team exposed human cells to ultraviolet radiation. That's a controlled form of cellular stress after pre-treating them with various flavonoids. Cells pre-treated with flavonoids, especially those containing sugar groups, maintained much higher survival rates compared to untreated cells or those given vitamin C, which has basic antioxidant activity. Vitamin C protected cells primarily by neutralizing reactive oxygen species, but the flavonoids appeared to act differently. Flavonoid-treated cells preserved structural and repair proteins that were otherwise degraded by UV stress. In other words, the cell's molecular scaffolding stayed intact. The findings suggest that flavonoids may contribute to cellular resistance through non-antioxidant mechanism by forming supramolecular assemblies that physically interact with and stabilize proteins much like a temporary molecular framework that shields the cell during stress. At the molecular level, the researchers found that small structural differences between flavonoids can completely change how they behave inside the body. Quercetin, for example, is a simple molecule with a clean ring-shaped structure, but two of its close relatives, isocorsetrin and corsetrin, have a small sugar molecule attached to the same ring. This might seem like a minor tweak, but it changes how the compounds interact with each other and with proteins inside cells. When the team simulated these interactions, they saw that flavonoids didn't just float around independently. They stacked together like flat tiles linking through weak electrical interactions called van der Waals forces. Over time, these stacks grew into long fibers resembling the way that DNA strand or protein filaments form organized structures in the cell. These fiber-like assemblies weren't just decorative, they appeared to connect to nearby proteins, changing how those proteins moved and functioned. In some cases, they seem to act like a molecular scaffolding, helping proteins hold their shape or work more efficiently when the cell was under stress. Interestingly, the flavonoids that contained sugars formed more flexible branching networks. These more complex structures could help stabilize multiple proteins at once, almost like a web that holds the cell's machinery together during damage or heat stress. The simulations also hinted at another layer of control. Assemblies might slow down or organize chemical reactions by subtly influencing how enzymes, those are the proteins that drive reactions, interact with their targets. Think of it as regulating traffic inside the cell, making sure reactions don't spiral out of control when the environment becomes too stressful. Now, it's important to note that this study used cell and computer modeling methodologies. Polyphenols, including flavonoids, aren't typically absorbed in their full form. Many, especially those with attached sugar groups, again called glycosides, they pass through the upper intestine largely intact. Once they reach the lower gut, they're broken down by microbes into smaller metabolites, which can then enter circulation. So when we eat polyphenol-rich foods, we're not absorbing the same molecule that was in the fruit or tea. In most cases, we're absorbing what our body and microbiome transform it into. That means the health effects depend not only on the compound itself, but also on how it's processed inside of us. The new data shouldn't be treated as proof of a single mechanism. The researchers themselves emphasized that these simulations were exploratory. They were designed to generate hypotheses rather than establish fact. Still, they point toward the possibility that flavonoids might promote resilience not just through antioxidant chemistry, but through physical interactions that stabilize the proteins and structures that keep cells functioning under stress. This idea, it fits very neatly with a broader principle emerging in nutrition science, that diversity itself promotes adaptability. A wide range of compounds engages 
a wider network of cellular pathways, reinforcing resilience across multiple systems. It's the biochemical explanation behind an old dietary heuristic, the color spectrum. Different colors reflect different flavonoids and polyphenols, each with distinct structures, roles, and effects. And the epidemiological evidence supports it. In the UK Biobank study of over 120,000 adults, those with the widest variety of flavonoid intake had a 6 to 20% lower risk of death from major diseases, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and respiratory illness. Importantly, both diversity and total amount were independent predictors of longevity, suggesting that eating more kinds of flavonoid-rich foods may matter just as much as eating more of them, but eating more of them also reduces disease risk in its own right. So when it comes to plant compounds, it isn't about finding the best polyphenol or the highest dose. It's about molecular variety, combining tea with berries, citrus, dark chocolate, or red grapes, so that your cells, like the molecules themselves, have more ways to adapt and more ways to endure. Polyphenol diversity may be nature's way of building flexibility into biology, one colorful meal at a time. Thank you for joining me today on Daily Value. Until next time, stay healthy.